25,000 subscribers. Never in a million years would I think that this would be a reality. Um, I know that in the grand scheme of things, um, 25,000 isn't a lot, but in terms of like what we're doing and what this channel is about, I guess it's a really big number considering that 25,000 people click that little red button underneath the video. Um, that's huge. So before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you. This would not be happening. I would not have this camera on me. I would not have these lights. I would not have those guitars that are off the screen. I would not have this setup behind me if it wasn't for you guys. So with that being said, today's video is gonna be a little bit different and something that we don't do often on the channel. The last time that I did one of these was when we were at 10,000 subscribers and now we're at 25,000. So if there are any questions in this video that haven't been answered, like my background, um, my musical background, how long I've been playing, all that stuff, um, it's probably because it got answered in the last video. Um, so this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit more detailed and a little bit more focused around what's happening on the channel these days. So let's get into it. So before we start, you know, the usual, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. Um, and if you aren't subscribed already, then this is the perfect time to do so. If you guys want to support me directly, definitely check out my Patreon and all my affiliate links for all the gear that I use. All that stuff will be in the description below. So a couple of weeks back, I asked on my Instagram story, which if you aren't following me on, you should definitely do so. You get a lot more behind the scenes stuff on there, at Keon Hushman Live, I'll have a summer on the screen. I did an Instagram story asking just ask me anything for a 25,000 subscriber special. It's coming up and I'll pick the best ones and I'll put it onto the channel. So I basically just cherry picked my favorites and the ones that are the most applicable to what we're doing on the channel now. And um, some of these questions are really insightful. So hopefully you guys pay attention and kind of get a kick out of it as well. Uh, first question is from Rudy Ayub. Yo bro, um, I love your content. You know, it's great and everything. But uh, I have a question. Have you ever considered, you know, playing you know good music i don't know honestly rudy like every single day of my life i wonder why i'm here and what i'm doing but then i just remember that all music is rubbish so it's fine next question is from ro or i built the sky hey what's up kian hey um look congratulations on 25k subscribers on youtube there's a massive effort and i know that number is going to quadruple or more in the next year or so so keep at it you're doing great stuff man um, hey, I wanted to know when you plan to uh, take to the stage with your own material and uh, also come and hang out with me in Melbourne. So yeah, let me know, man. If you guys don't know Ro or I Built the Sky, I Built the Sky is a prog metal project based in Melbourne, uh, Melbourne, Australia. And it's one of my favorites because he's really, really good at guitar. And every time I listen to him, I get jealous. Ro, when will I be taking the stage? Um, I've been trying to organize something with one of my drama friends for the past few months, you know, like every couple of weeks. Um, I go and jam at his house. If you've been following me on Instagram, you might have seen that. Um, we just jam to our favorite songs, whether it's like Periphery songs or Alpha Wolf songs or North Lane songs. Um, we just have a good time. In terms of when we're going to be actually going on a stage, if that does ever happen, I'm not too sure, but you never know. Never say never. Next question is from George. What? Why'd you do this? Leave me alone. Why did I do it? Why did I do this? That's a really good question. I'm just going to assume that you're talking about this, this video, this everything. Um, the reason why I did it, why did I do it? Honestly, I couldn't give you a concrete reason. I think it's a lot of little things. Um, I've always had a passion for making videos and obviously music, like even when I was eight, 10 years old, um, I remember I would like make movies on Windows Movie Maker and burn it onto a, a CD to give to my friends, yes that long ago. And now that I'm 21 years old and sitting here, um, really none of that has ever changed. You know, I've always had the passion for music. I've always had the passion for technology, whether it's like cameras or audio or computer stuff. Like that's a big part of it. Um, I have a massive passion for all that stuff. So it's all kind of intertwined and um, I look forward to making videos and I look forward to recording and all that stuff. I guess the real reason why I love making videos, especially like the educational ones, like tutorial based ones, is that people actually get a kick out of it. Um, if someone messages or comments saying like, yes, this was like really helpful, thank you. Like that means the world and um, I love doing stuff like that. So if I can just keep doing that and you know, kind of make it like a full-time thing, that would be unbelievable. Hey Kian, hope you're good. Happy birthday, man. Congratulations on being 25,000 years old. And uh, my question is, what's been the best part of your YouTube journey? Stay lit. 
Zhao, thank you so much for your question. Um, what's my favorite part of this whole thing? Um, well, if it wasn't the last thing that I just said, which was, you know, like helping people and, you know, seeing other people really benefit off the videos that I make and stuff like that. Um, if it's either this big or that big, it doesn't really matter as long as someone's getting some enjoyment out of it. Um, if it's not that, it's definitely the connections that I make along the way, like with yourself, like with George, like with Ro, um, like with Rudy even, like people like that. Um, people that are like-minded like me, people who are really passionate about music and making videos and making content and all that stuff. And um, just everything that happens along the way, all the little wins, you know? I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that's something that I really enjoy about all of this, if it isn't helping people. Matt Hill 21 asks, when are you gonna battle Zhao? Whenever he accepts my invitation. Toby asks, thoughts on the quad cortex? If you guys don't know what he's talking about, it's the quad cortex floor modeler, amp modeler from Neural DSP. I am absolutely obsessed with that thing and I've never been more obsessed with something without actually owning it. If there is anyone from NeuroDSP watching this and wants to get in touch with me about sending me one, even if I have to pay for it, like, please, I want to try out that thing so bad. Seeing all my musician friends get one, I'm on Instagram, like, really makes me want to play with one. Like, I really want to have a go at it because I think it's absolutely insane what they're doing. I love NeuroDSP. I love their whole mindset. I love... Um, what they're doing in not only the plug-in market, but now in like physical hardware market. Um, so yeah, having the ability to play around on one of those things and make videos with it would be awesome. Next question is from Jake Vasilevsky. Um, shout out to the Geelong boys. And he says, as a beginner guitarist, would I recommend learning on an acoustic or an electric? I always used to say acoustic guitar because you know, you build up the finger strength and you know, most acoustic guitars are cheaper than an electric guitar. Um, even if it's like a cheapy nylon string, but um, these days I'm kind of saying more electric purely because of the fact that one, it's easier to play and um, two, I feel like a lot of the music that's on an electric guitar is a little bit more accessible. So in turn, it makes whoever's learning it, you know, more hype to start learning guitar, um, get some more engaged with the instrument. So probably electric, I'd say, or if they like acoustic stuff, just give them an acoustic. Every person is different, you know. Um, I don't even know if I can answer this question, but I guess it really just depends on the person. P. Beefsky asked, if you could only have one pedal, which one would you choose? Now, I would say something like a tuner pedal, but tuners are on everything these days. So I guess if I had to have one pedal that I know could work with basically anything that I wanted to do with it, um, at this point in time, it would definitely be the precision drive from Horizon Devices. If you guys don't know, I just became an endorsed artist with Horizon Devices. I love this thing. This thing is absolutely insane. Um, I feel like anything that I put in front of it, I can make it sound good, no matter what amp it is, um, no matter what cab or guitar that I'm using, this thing does the job every single time. And that's mainly due to the attack knob, you know, how much low end I want to take out of my signal and stuff like that. Um, but just even like the drive circuit and how it sounds and the inbuilt noise gate as well, like you're basically getting two for one in this pedal and it's super, super awesome. And if I had to live with one pedal, this would definitely be it. Chris asks, what string gauges do I use for my guitars and what brand? So the strings that I use on my guitars are strings from the string source. This is a custom packet, so I'm going to ignore this for now. But the string gauges that I use are different um, across all my guitars. It really depends on what tuning I'm using. If I'm using um, higher tuning like drop D or something like that, obviously my strings are going to be lighter. If I'm doing something like drop A on a six string, like the strings are going to be heavier. Um, I use the amber set for drop D, um, the drop amber set. So that's a 10.5 to 58. Um, for six strings, um, I use the Emerald Drop 6, so that's um, in Drop C on a 25 and a half inch scale, that's 11 to 60. Um, what else have I got here? For drop A Sharp or Drop B on a 25 and a half inch, I've got the Black Pearl 6 set, so that's a 13 to a 70. I don't have the seven string pack on me at the moment, but it's the Topaz 7, uh, the Topaz Drop 7 string set, which is a 10 to 72, if I'm not mistaken and that's in drop A flat on a seven string um, on a 26 and a half inch scale. So if you go to their website, they have like a chart with all the different scale lengths, all the different tunings, um, and it basically just hand picks what gauge they think would be the best for you. In terms of like the actual string, like they last forever, they sound super bright, and I haven't had a single one break on me yet, so pretty good. Next question is from Jason and he says, what helped you click when writing single note riffs or gallops? So around like 2012 to 2015, I was really into like 
classic metalcore, like As I Lay Dying and Killswitch Engage and stuff like that. And a lot of that music has the gallops, um, all those like little all those chugs and stuff like that. So learning all that stuff really got me um, accustomed to all that stuff. And then it just kind of progressed when you're starting to learn like um, era stuff and periphery stuff and Veil of Meyer stuff. Um, all that is really, really technical. So just learning my favorite songs um, kind of just build my chops up and all that stuff. A band that doesn't get enough credit for all that stuff is definitely Monuments. If you guys haven't heard of Monuments, it's just a gent um, progressive metal band and the riffs that they make are absolutely bonkers. A lot of string skipping, a lot of gallops. Um, the string skipping is a massive one, whether it's between the sixth and the fourth string on a sixth string or the seventh and the fifth. Um, on a seven string because they're always drop tuned. There's always that octave relation between the same fret on those two strings. So just kind of bouncing around between those strings really, really built up my chops um, in terms of like string skipping and single notey type riffs. Next question is from Pete and he says, guitar that you'd love to own that you don't, stop the Misha spam. Thanks for the question, Pete. Um, one guitar that I'd really love to own that's not a Jackson. I'll say not a Jackson because the only Jackson guitars that I would really um, want to own other Misha ones because I love their spec. Um, but if it wasn't a Jackson, and I'm going to exclude customs as well because that's just cheating. If it had to be like a brand name guitar, I'd say like a really high end Ibanez Prestige. I've played some of them in shops and stuff like that, and they feel really, really nice. Um, but some of the specs aren't for me, especially on the higher end Ibanez stuff. You know, most of them have like Floyds or maybe the scale length isn't long enough or something. So there's a couple of things that set me back from getting on myself, but if I could find one that wasn't a Floyd Rose, if it was a hardtail bridge and was like at least 27 inches in scale, that would be absolutely awesome. The next question is from Annie16 and he says, can you give pointers to someone who's just getting started in digital amp sims and recording? So the tips that I would give someone who is just starting with all this stuff, like recording at home on your computer, um, recording with amp sims, is um, take a DI track as well when you're recording. That's a big one. And another one that I'd say is obviously play with a metronome. It's inbuilt in your door. Always record to it. Even if you aren't recording, always play with the metronome on. You'd be surprised how much it actually helps in your recording your own riffs and just generally just builds up your playing. I'm gonna butcher these names. Um, next question is from Zav LLC underscore Zavlich. Um, says, what's the riff or band that influenced your guitar playing the most? Obviously, it's no secret that I'm a massive Periphery fan. You know, I own signature Periphery guitars. Um, most of my riffs are inspired from guys from Periphery. Um, I really love their music, but more than their music, I love the way that they've influenced me in literally everything else. I literally would not be doing this video if it wasn't for them. They introduced me to home recording. They introduced me to tone. They introduced me to really cool guitar specs. Um, all that stuff is because of that band, because of Misha, Jake, Mark, um, and I am really, really grateful for all that. Soundgrind Studio asks, what's your favorite non-metal musician? I get this question a lot and it's definitely Dua Lipa. If you guys don't know who Dua Lipa is, you've been living under a rock. She won like five Grammys or something stupid. She's absolutely insane. Her songs are stupid catchy and there's just something about them that I can't even put my finger on, but it just gets stuck in your head. The songwriting is actually really good, even though it's only like a radio pop song. I hate that, but um, I know a lot of people think like that, but even though it's that like, she is really, really, really good and her songs are really good as well. Next question is from Derek LT and he asks, any chance that you get an actual bass guitar or do you already have one? Um, thank you for the question. I always think about getting a real bass guitar. However, the ones that I love the most are really expensive, um, Dingwall guitars. A lot of people use Dingwalls like North Lane, Periphery, Intervals, Alpha Wolf. Um, basically any modern metal prog project uses a dingwall guitar or dingwall bass. I'd love to have one, but to accommodate all the tunings that I got going on on all my guitars, I'd have to have a couple and then it starts to get expensive. And then when you factor in like taking care of them, getting them set up, buying fresh strings for them pretty much every time you record, um, it does get very, very expensive. So that's why I don't get one. Um, and that's why I'm happy to use stuff like gin bass from Submission Audio, which is just a modeled virtual instrument that models a dingwall bass. Wow Wow Walsh asks if you start guitar later in life um, would it be more or less beneficial to you as a guitarist honestly I started guitar when I was really little like five years old um, and I was never forced into it or anything I did get handed a guitar when I, I was five on my fifth birthday um, and you know when you're five years old you don't have any responsibilities or priorities or anything like that you're five you can do whatever you want you can play PlayStation you can go outside um, or you can play the guitar because you got given one and that's what I did and then it just kind of turned into this thing where I just really enjoyed it and um, I just haven't stopped if I start a guitar when I was say like 15 years old or something like that I don't think I'll be anywhere near as committed or interested or definitely not be doing any of this 
if I started that late because I'll probably be doing something else. I'll probably have other responsibilities. I probably wouldn't think it's as important, but because I started when I was so young, um, it's just really cemented in my brain and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm really grateful that it turned out that way. Next question is from David Alexanderov. And he asked, if you had a signature guitar, what brand or specs would you choose? Now, if I'm thinking about what brand I'd pick, I'd probably want to get a brand that's really modern thinking because a lot of the specs that I would want are like really modern thinking. Um, like for example, Ibanez is one that comes to mind straight away. Um, I know Jackson, I have a lot of Jacksons and stuff, um, but in terms of like what Jackson do, they make really nice guitars, but most of their target demographic is not um, the stuff that we're into. But for the stuff that we are into, most of it is Ibanez. Um, there's a lot of Ibanez artists that play the stuff that we do, like for example, Meshuggah, like massive one. Jake Bowen from Periphery has one. Um, I'm pretty sure the Crystal Lake guys play Ibanez guitars. There's a lot of people that play Ibanez guitars and for good reason. In terms of specs, I'm thinking of a seven string. Um, I'd probably go like 27 or 27 and a half scale, something that you don't see very often to kind of differentiate it from the rest. Um, and I do like that little bit of extra scale length for tension and stuff like that. Um, I'd want an Evertune bridge. Um, I'd want bare knuckle pickups. I'd want at least a 16 inch fretboard radius. Um, and I don't really like inline tuner headstocks. I know that sounds a bit strange, but I'd rather have like four on one side and three on the other. I really like that design. The six in line or seven in line does get a little bit too much and the headstock gets a little bit strange. And they're always so close to each other. I can't really, do it, I got big fingers. In terms of woods and stuff like that, any like kind of neutral wood for body, like outer or um, basswood or something like that. Something that's really easy to source for the company, you gotta think about that as well. Like I can't be having like African mahogany on my bodies and stuff like that or whatever's like a really scarce wood because it just wouldn't make sense from a production standpoint. Um, so anything like basswood or older that's like relatively easy to source would be a smart option. Um, roasted maple neck if I could, that'd be cool. Um, and ebony fretboard, I reckon, because I really like the way that dark ebony looks. But yeah, you guys get the gist. A really modern pointy guitar um, that has all the bells and whistles, basically. DJ, he says, hey man, love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, and he says, what are you currently learning music-wise? Right now, I'm starting to get back into learning songs that I really like. Um, I didn't really do it for a little while because I didn't really have time. Um, but I really do enjoy learning songs in full if I really like it. Like I just finished learning Gungrave by Aero. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me do a little cover of that. Um, I really enjoy that song. I love the technicality of it. And that's what draws me to songs like technicality, um, just great groovy, fun sounding riffs to learn. That's what I love and that song is full of them. So in terms of what I'm learning musically lately, it's definitely just getting back, you know, tracing back my steps um, and going to why I love guitar so much in the first place. And it was like learning my favorite songs so I could play along with my favorite bands if I'm on headphones or whatever. Jeffrey asks, what is the best plugin by Neuro DSP in your opinion in modern metal tones? I get this type of question all the time, like what's the best this and what's the best that? And there's so many different ways that you could answer this question. Like for example, if you said, I only have a guitar that's a six string and drop C, I'd say, cool, get something like the Archetype Nolly or the Soldano or something like that. If you said, I have a guitar that's like an eight string and I'm tuning it to drop E or something stupid, then I'd say get the Fort and Nameless. It really depends on what you're using it for. I really love the Fort and Nameless. I think it's an absolutely outstanding amp sim and it's one of my favorites to date. So if you just want pure modern metal tone and nothing else, I'd suggest that one. But then again, your use case may be different and it might not work for you. They do have free trials, so you can try them out on the website. Kevin asks, when are you releasing some original music? Can't wait. Thank you, Kevin, for the question. Um, when I'm releasing original music, when I get time to finally write it and um, mix it and master it and do the promo for it and do the marketing for it. And as you can tell, there's a lot of things that happen in the background that isn't revolved around the music, um, which is probably the biggest bottleneck at the moment for all that stuff. But hopefully, you know, when uni's finished, when life frees up a little bit more, I'll have a little bit more time to kind of really focus in on that stuff. I've got the YouTube as well. That takes up a lot of time. Um, but yeah, just getting time to do it, that's the big thing. Oscar asks, what do you think about Evertune and ESP guitars? Evertune, I'll let you know because I'm currently in the process of getting an Evertune installed in my 30 inch baritone. Um, it's getting installed by Michael at Harren's Custom Guitars in Melbourne. If you guys don't know Michael, he does all the tech for stuff like I Built the Sky, North Lane, um, basically any Melbourne, Sydney based metal band, um, he does it all. 
and he's really good at what he does. So he'll be fitting the Evertune for me and that's a sponsored video by Evertune. That should be coming relatively soon um, and I'm super, super keen to try it out. As far as ESP guitars, um, I really enjoy ESP guitars, like their overall look and you know the specs that they got going on, really modern thinking. Um, there's some really nice high-end ESP guitars that I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, no, love that company, love what they're doing. Um, I have played a couple and they felt nice, so yeah. Tips for musicians, students, finding time and money to fund the passion for music. Um, in terms of money, it shouldn't really matter too much. If you have a laptop, I'm assuming if you're a student, you already have a laptop. Um, and if you're a musician, you already have a guitar or a bass or whatever you're using. Um, there's heaps of ways to record songs and demos for free. I have so many up on the YouTube channel if you haven't watched them already. Free tone videos, free mixing videos, all that stuff, all with free plugins. Like, it's really easy to get into all that stuff for free. The only thing that you'd need to spend money on is like maybe an interface and a cable or something. Um, but like, that's literally if you've already got the guitar and the laptop. Time is a little bit more different because everyone's situation is different, um, but I think that if you really wanted to do it, you would find time or make time. That's the way that I always think about it. Um, I have a lot of time to do things um, and I always pick this stuff because I really enjoy doing it. Probably more than uni, I should probably focus on that more. Um, but yeah, that's my advice to you. X Higgy Stardust says, you get one conversation with a musical figure to fully pick their brain on anything. Who is it? That's a really good question. There's a lot of different people. Like, could I go something like Michael Jackson? Um, someone like that or someone that's like like alive and kicking and like a role model for me There's definitely a lot of people that I would like to um, have a conversation with but it always comes back to Misha Mansour from Periphery And it's not really anything to do with music. It's more to do with you know um, From a business standpoint how he got from where he was to where he is now and the steps that he made along the way That's something that's really interesting to me um, of course, like you want to talk about guitars and all that stuff for sure, but it's probably more so trying to pick his brain on literally everything else that's related to the music apart from the music itself. Given that it's so relevant to me and what I like making and the music that I like making and this whole scene, um, he basically set all this up. There would not be a Horizon Devices. There wouldn't be such a big emphasis on bare knuckle pickups in our scene anyway, I don't think, if it wasn't for Misha. Um, there wouldn't be so many things happening in this scene if it wasn't for him and that's what I want to pick his brain on. TCT Music asks, how do you stay inspired? Great question. Um, it does get hard sometimes, I won't lie. Um, that's a musician's curse. One day you really feel like doing it, another day you don't. Um, whenever I get in a rut, I usually have a little break, like I don't touch my guitar for a day or two, um, or I listen to different types of music. That's a big one. Um, really like contemporary, like pop music, just really easy going, slow music. Something that's not like super full on, just so I can stand back and have a look at the bigger picture and realize like there is more. Um, and how can I take influence from that and put it into whatever I'm doing. Eric B plays guitar asks, what are some things that really elevate your abilities um, or help elevate your abilities on the guitar? Definitely recording myself and start playing into a door uh, or a digital audio workstation like FL Studio or Pro Tools or Cubase or whatever you use. That is the biggest thing I can ever say to anyone because when you sit there with a metronome and record yourself, you start to realize really quickly if you suck or if you're half decent. So constantly playing with a metronome, constantly reviewing your own takes, your own playing is probably the most beneficial thing you could do to yourself as a guitarist right now if you're not doing it already. I always think about this, like when I was 12 years old, um, looking back, like I was very good as a 12 year old, but then nothing really changed between 12 and 16. Like I was just as competent. Like, yes, I might've gotten a little bit tighter and whatever, but in terms of what my fingers could do, um, the ages between 12 and 16 were very much the same. And then around 16, 17, when you start recording yourself, when you start, you know, getting into different types of music and stuff like that, um, really technical stuff, that's when my guitar playing just took off. Basically just learning my favorite songs, um, learning the techniques, learning why they do what they do inspired me and helped me. And that's probably the best thing that you can do as well. Philip Lindbergh 05 asks, what's your opinion on eight string guitars? I did have an eight string. I had one a little while back. Um, I got it really cheap. Um, unfortunately, it was only 26 and a half scale length. So it was a little bit strange to get some of the tension that I was used to on say my six string or seven string. Um, I'll be playing with like 85 gauge strings on there and it would still be floppy um, in drop E. So I sold that guitar, um, but my opinion on eight strings are they're cool guitars and they're cool instruments. And if I could have one that was suited to my spec, I would definitely have one, but 
I don't, so there you go. Lucas Jermaine 11 asks, what are you using to play live? So when I go to my friend's house to jam, I bring my laptop, which has all my plugins on it. I bring an interface so I can connect my guitar to it. And then I have like a little FIFR speaker. It's a Headrush 112, so it's a 12 inch, 2000 watt speaker. So it's absolutely huge. You can get it really, really loud and um, it does the job for the moment. So that's what I use. A guitar dude asks, what do you think is the most challenging thing to achieve in a modern metal guitar tone? I personally think that finding the balance between being clear enough so that you can hear the notes being played over all the low end information that's coming in, because obviously when you're playing this type of music, you have seven string guitars, eight string guitars, stupid low notes, and it's just pushing more low end information into the amp, which can get things a little bit flubby. Um, so to compensate, you turn up the highest so you can bring out some more clarity in your guitar but then it gets too fizzy so like finding the balance between those two is always a tough one and getting enough saturation um, out of the guitar amp um, to make it kind of glue a little bit more as opposed to just being almost like a guitar a clean guitar with a distortion pedal on Daniel Speck asks mental health how does it affect musicians and how do you get through the tougher days so in my experience you know being an artistic person being a creative person a musician like many of you probably are um, mental health is always a big thing um, because you're constantly your mind is just in a million different places at once at least me anyway um, it can get hard to focus sometimes so whenever I'm having a tough day or something like that again I just like take a step back and um, just do something that I enjoy even if it's still playing the guitar but I'm not making a demo video for anyone I'm not making a riff because I have to do it before this time or something like that. I want to play guitar so I can learn Gungrave by error like I was talking about before and you know sit there and enjoy myself and play the song over and over and over and play it with the song up to speed and I get super hyped about that stuff because that's why I loved playing the guitar in the first place. I love being able to play my favorite songs with my favorite bands um, and yeah so just kind of getting to what really makes you enjoy whatever you're doing I think is a massive thing for mental health. Or if I can't be bothered doing that, I just take a break for a couple of hours, you know, maybe watch some Sopranos on TV or play some PlayStation or something like that. I don't know, just something chill. Daniel Speck also asks, what's your biggest tip to anyone who wants to grow a following through YouTube or Instagram? Sometimes I do sit and wonder how this all kicked off um, for me anyway, and I literally can't pinpoint it. So one thing I always try and do is make things more consistent. So like posting at least once a week if you can like if you're busy like no one's gonna put a gun to your head it's fine but like you know if you want to keep the ball rolling one high quality video a week you know if you're doing Instagram videos and stuff um, you know just little things it's all little things there's no one big thing um, it's definitely all little things like if you're filming something make sure it's like a good camera angle make sure there's enough light on you so you can see what you're doing make sure there's nothing happening in the background that's like messy like a messy bed or like a messy bedside table or something like that um you know uh, there's just so many little things like making sure it's a polished recording make sure the audio is good like not just having camera audio from your phone like if you want to go that extra mile and put in the extra effort to kind of grow the following and stuff like that you know go through the effort make the sound quality more polished like record into a door um, you know, just so many little things that really go a long way. But the one that's most important is consistency because if you're talking about like how to grow through Instagram and YouTube and algorithms and how videos get pushed and stuff like that, it's definitely consistency. Brand Schneider asks, what guitar would you save first if there was a fire? The one that I'd save first is either my seven string or six string Jackson. Um, I probably would have said seven string before, but if there was a fire, um, I'd probably get my six string Jackson USA Laguna Burst because that's probably worth the most out of my guitars and I'll probably sell it so I can get the equivalent of all my other guitars back. At least in this room anyway, there's not many sentimental things going on. Um, so if there was a fire, I'd definitely be a little bit more logical if I had the time to think um, and I'd grab that guitar and run away with it. Yosua Stangle, am I pronouncing that right? Yosua Stangle asks, are you still going to university? How do you balance that with YouTube and social life? Honestly, I don't really sleep that much. Um, the late hours of the night, like anywhere between 12 and three, is like me time, whether that's like, you know, writing a riff for a video or something like that, or just having a social life, like going to see friends or talk to friends on the phone at that time of the night if any are still awake. Like, um, it's all about compromising, I guess. Like, sure, there's gonna be times where you can't be in two places at once and that's fine. You're just gonna pick what's more relevant to you at that point in time. Thankfully these days, university isn't too hectic. I only have a couple more subjects left in my degree. Um, I'm not doing like four subjects a semester anymore. That was really full on when that was happening. 
um, and this was all happening as well. But now it's not as much, so I do have a little bit more time to myself. Nicholas asks, what pic do I use? Love the vids, keep them coming. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, the pic that I'm using, if I have it behind me, I don't. So these are the pics that I like using. It's the Dunlop Flow pics, and to be specific, these are the 88 millimeter, a little bit thinner, um, than what people would be using, I suppose, in terms of this style of music. But I like the thinner picks anyway, because when it's too thick, it kind of gets in the way of playing, for, at least for me anyway, especially when you're doing fast runs and stuff like that. With the thin pick, um, you can really flow through your strings, dig through the strings, and it doesn't put the string as out of tune. Um, so if you have a really thick pick and you pick really hard, that's just more force and the strings just gonna be moving up and down and bending out of tune and stuff like that. Whereas if you have a thinner pick, it kind of just flows through the string a little bit more so you get less of that kind of wobble in tuning. And I reckon that's all the questions for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting me along the way. There is so much more to come and I can't wait for you guys to be there with me along the way. Massive thanks to Rudy, George, Zhao, and I Built the Sky or Ro. Thank you so much for all your videos and thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all my Patreons. Without you guys, I will not be doing what I'm doing. And I know I always say that, but it's absolutely true. You guys support me in ways that you couldn't imagine. Thank you so much. If you guys want to become a Patreon, you can definitely check out the link in my description, as well as all the affiliate links as well, if you guys want to support me directly. If you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you liked about it. Um, if you aren't subscribed already and you've been watching to this point of the video, what are you doing? Subscribe. Um, but yeah, until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.